Hey guys, for my first YouTube video essay, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things that happens in video games, which is when the environment of the video game changes in response to the player's actions. Uh, I'll show you a few examples. The first example that I like is from this old SNES RPG, Japanese RPG called Terra Enigma. It's one of the best, it's my favorite game of all time and it's kind of obscure because it never really made it to the American market. But anyway, so you play as this guy, Ark, and Ark's job is to resurrect the world. Uh, I'm gonna skip over some story because you just need to feel the vibe of this. So here Ark is in some kind of swamp, you see, some kind of really dark and dank and kind of a corrupted natural environment. It's all you know dreary and the music is kind of forlorn. And so what Ark is gonna do is he's gonna crawl into the tree and then he's gonna fight a bunch of parasites and um, weird poisonous creatures and so on. Right, so I'm gonna skip ahead and you'll see that, you know, so there are monsters in here that Ark has to fight, they can damage him, get some levels, pick up all the usual RPG stuff. And uh, observe how at this point there's like, the water is purple, it's poisonous, and I believe if you jump inside you'll take damage. So that's kind of another thing that I think good video games do with their storytelling, which is that they use the gameplay to help you feel the story. So in this case, when Ark falls into the poisonous water, you take damage as the player. And so you get to feel what the game is trying to tell you, which is that, oh, you know, this place is poisonous. And so watch this. So now this is when you get going down into the heart of the tree. The tree. And I like how this actually reminds me of uh, the stage changes between Mega Man X right before the boss fight. You kind of have a sense that oh something's different, something's gonna change, something's happening. And yeah, so you come here to the heart of the tree, the tree and the heart of the tree is, you know, it's not corrupted, it's not poisonous and you get to talk to a lily and the lily says thank you for saving me, the surface is ruined but deep under recovery is taking place. Yeah, so the environment is changing because of the player's actions and it's so you know you get to feel um, a sense of what your actions are achieving in the game. All right, let's skip ahead to a boss fight. So this is the boss fight in the Ra tree, and you know, so you just saw the lily, you just saw the clean water, and now you get a sense that oh, this is the parasite that is keeping the tree down, that is poisoning the tree. So you want to kill it. You want to kill it so that you can save the plants, so that you can, you know, get rid of the poison. So I'm going to speed up the boss fight. This is at 20x speed of how long the boss fight is. And yeah, I'm going to make this two times the speed. So here, okay, alright, Ark has killed the boss, the parasite. The parasite has been defeated. And this is the Ra tree telling Ark that you know, green will soon carpet the world, but it is still too early for the world to be resurrected. So yeah, small, there's more work that needs to be done. I'm, I'm still playing this at 2x speed, so I actually really like what the game does with these moments. So this is actually almost like a, it's almost like a post-game credits scene, like a micro. It's just this really slow, luxurious cutscene. I'm playing it at double speed. And you kind of get to sit back and enjoy the effects of the work that you've just done. So you've just put in all this work to kill the parasite, right? And you have to go and get some special plant leaves as flippers, and you have to get some like special dew drops to prevent the poison, and all of that work, what for? It's for this. So you have just saved the Ra tree, and now the game environment is green. And check this out. So this is, we're back to where we were when Ark first found the Ra tree. Remember earlier that dark, desolate, dank, red, 
environment. Well, once you've killed the parasite and saved the raw tree, the game environment has changed because of your actions. You just literally saved uh, the flora of the planet. So, you know, the world was once, you know, barren and, and had been full of death and decay and now it has flowers and you're no longer alone in this world. The flowers can talk to you. And this just is a theme of the game and now look at the world map. The world map is green. Uh, and it's just um, it's just a sign of what the game is about and what's to come. And so Ark will repeat what he did with the trees. Next he will do it with the birds and then after that he'll do it with the rest of the animals. And then he will do it with people. And uh, just the game it's a beautiful, beautiful game. I highly recommend it. It's, it's such... It gets so big and it also is so intimate and it just... It tells a wonderful story of rebirth and renewal and conflict and struggle. And, you know, you feel like you are the player and you feel like you're changing the world because you really are. So here is another game that I enjoyed very much as a child. This is Heroes of Might and Magic 3. And this is just one section of the game. So there's multiple parts to the game. This is when you're building out your base or one of your bases. So this is the castle base. And there are like 10 or 12 or 13 different kinds of um, bases that you could be building. And every, bu every building that you build in your base gives you new abilities. So this is a Right now the mage guild is being upgraded and with each additional level that you build you have access to better and better spells. I believe these are the pikeman and archer recruitment buildings. So once you build these buildings, you get to start recruiting troops every week in the game, every turn. And so the point of... So then the cool thing is I found this video on YouTube because somebody felt nostalgic enough to want to look at this and they don't just want to watch the f they don't just want to look at the base that's completed they want to watch the base being built over time because there's something very satisfying about watching the base being built over time each building requires resources for you to build so you need to you know collect wood and collect stone and all of those things and in order to do those things you have to play the game so that brings us back to you know you have to play the game get good, achieve results, and then the, the in-game buildings are almost reward for your actions. You feel accomplished as a player and you feel satisfied looking at your buildings that have been built and all these you know, leveled up troops that you get to recruit and use on the battlefield. It, as with Terranigma before, it, the, the game environment changing in response to your actions is just very satisfying. So this is how it's like at the start, and I'm guessing they're going to show us how it looks like at the end. Yeah, that's how it looks like when it's like totally um, kitted out, totally upgraded. The last game I want to talk about is Mass Effect Andromeda. So Mass Effect Andromeda is unfortunately not nearly as good a game as it should have been. Uh, I was a big fan of the original Mass Effect trilogy and so I was really hoping that Andromeda was going to be good. But unfortunately, it really suffers from a weak story and weak characters. But this is one of the things that I think the game got right, which is that part of the plot of the game is that you are a pathfinder and that your job is to find planets that are inhabitable by humans and so you come to all of these planets in the different galaxy in Andromeda and you look for planets that are almost hospitable and then you terraform them these planets have these ancient technology called the vaults and if you go into the vaults you get to terraform the planet so this is Vold and Vold is cold so all of the planets that you play on each have different reasons why they are currently inhospitable. And Vold is cold. 
right? So there's another planet that's too hot. There's another planet that's um, has radiation, and Vold is cold. And so you can feel it while you're playing the game, while you're on this map. That you know, there's snow everywhere. you if you if you wander into some of the colder areas on the map, you actually start taking damage from the cold. And so you have to see, like, your life support level is low, and then you've got to get back into the vehicle as quickly as you can. So you really physically feel, as the player, that the environment is harsh and unforgiving. And, you know, your job is to change the environment, to make it hospitable. And to do that, you know, you have to, you have to work for it. You have to travel around. You have to find um, the vaults. So here's an example of, uh, I think the character is going to get out and then they're going to go and talk to NPCs. They're going to talk to people who are living on this planet right now. And you just get a sense of the challenges that they're facing. You see, they're all these kind of hot lamps. And the temperature is supposed to be, what, negative 30 degrees Celsius. It's freezing cold. And yeah, you just kind of... I personally found that I found myself feeling, oh, you know what a harsh environment and what what can we do squinting stars it's the pathfinder we heard about how you punched the cat punched them right in the exaltations so amazing so let's skip ahead to what the vault is like so to terraform the planet you got to find your way to these vaults and these vaults themselves are interesting environments because they look and feel totally different from how the surface of the plants feel like. So all of the vaults are similar to each other, which gives you this sense of, wow, all of these different planets in the galaxy have the same structure in them, same set of structures in them with like this, this mysterious technology okay. that, that is strange and alien. And yet, you know, you can sense that there's some kind of intelligence to it. Let's forward things up a little bit. We turn the power on. You need to locate the console to activate the purification field pathfinder. So I am going to fast forward at 20x speed again. You get to kind of see what the rest of the mission looks like. So, you know, you see the vault itself is kind of a big challenge. You have to do some fighting, some climbing around, and then you see there are some like bigger enemies that you have to fight. And then there's a puzzle sequence that you have to solve, and then keep running and jumping and shooting enemies, and you're still in the vault, you're still in the ground. You're trying to get to the purification chamber, which is, I think, that. So there is this console that you have to press. And when you press it, it releases this black cloud of death that you just have to run away from and so you get this kind of Indiana Jones escape sequence which is pretty fun although that does happen it happened to me as well it's kind of frustrating when it's not too obvious where you're supposed to go so you kind of fall and at least the game doesn't punish you terribly for it but you get to you get to run <laughs> and there are items you can pick up along the way which feels a little silly but whatever it's hardly hardly one of the worst things about this game still I found myself playing this game a couple of times just to try and make sense of it like I wanted to understand why it's not good and I could make a separate video about why it's not good and I think it's actually worth making even though people have already made such videos because just Mass Effect, the original trilogy was so good and Andromeda was so bad and it really boils down to the story but here you go, so the vault has been Man, never gets less unlocked, Let's get out solved and now Ryder and his friends are gonna go back up to the surface and you're gonna see how the environment has changed You can actually rotate around in this spot if you want, which is kind of fun. Here you go. And... Out the front door. 
and you can see already that the kind of harsh blues and whites have become green you can see the northern Perfect. lights you can see the stars and it's just i personally With found it very satisfying to get to this point to have terraformed the world and that's a wrap on my first ever video essay on youtube.com this has been something that i have been wanting to do for years actually i've always you know clicked around on youtube.com and looked at other people's videos and i've always thought huh it would be so nice to make videos myself but i have no idea how to do it i have no video editing background no filmmaking background nothing of the sort but i've just been determined to try and figure this stuff out and so this is my first attempt i hope that was somewhat interesting i hope that didn't feel like too much of a slog i know that the video could have been shorter i think this video is shaping up to be almost 20 minutes long and it could have probably been done in about maybe 10 minutes maybe eight nine minutes but that would have required a much more intense cut this took me three hours to produce and i would rather continue to spend three hours at a time making 20 minute videos than to spend you know six hours trying to make 10 minute 10 minute videos because i don't know in advance which videos will be good and i am hopeful that i have enough friends and, and supporters who are willing to check out my imperfect material and give me feedback and so on uh, I do expect to continue to get better at cutting videos and I will also probably start writing out scripts so that I can you know um and ah less and waste less time in making my points but for the time being I am very satisfied with what I just did and I'm proud of myself actually and uh, thank you so much for sticking around um, don't <laughs> I, I understand now why people say don't forget to like comment and subscribe because people put so much work into the videos that they share with the world and yeah I would really appreciate any thoughts that you have to share with me and uh, I will do this again so see you guys around thank you so much